Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. When objects and structures are kept in water for long periods, they begin to accumulate microorganisms, plants, algae, or small animals that are not wanted on those surfaces. This is called biofouling, or just fouling, and vessels like ships and submarines are unsafe from this effect. A buildup of this kind of matter can bring up negative consequences to ships, like an increased drag, reduction of speed, or damage to the hull leading to costly repairs. This is why finding solutions to this problem became a top priority for shipbuilders, resulting in the development of anti-fouling paint. Such coating can slow the growth and ease the detachment of organisms that attach to the hull. Early efforts to create anti-fouling coatings resulted in the use of materials like tar or animal fats that offered limited protection and degraded quickly. This led to the use of products with arsenic, mercury, or copolymer paints that lasted longer but put a huge environmental and health risk. Non-toxic approaches were developed for products that are in use today. Nowadays, to apply such coating, experts at the shipyards must prepare the surface of the hull first. This means polishing and removing any trace of rust is necessary especially in big vessels like aircraft carriers or cargo ships. When the surface is cleaned and treated, a train team is in charge of adding the coating using paint spray guns or even paint rollers if the ship is small. Anti-fouling coatings of today focus on being more complex and environmentally friendly than the previous compounds. The type of coating, called fouling release, uses a polymer as a base, like silicone or epoxies. Natural enzymes extracted from plants or marine organisms are also used, thanks to their anti-fouling properties. Finally, compounds with copper derivatives are also used, as copper ions help to detach and stop the formation of shellfish colonies in the hull. Considering how corrosive can be the marine environment over time, it is clear that almost every surface of a ship, exterior and interior, must have some kind of coating. This is why the work of the marine painters is so important, as they ensure that all the ship is protected against marine conditions. As skilled painters work mainly with steel surfaces, this means that specific treatments, different from those used in walls or wood, must be taken. Old paint burning and oil removal are done using special solvents, and coating is delivered with spray guns.
for a ship to maintain stability or to control buoyancy for submersible vessels, a ballast tank is needed. This is a compartment located at the bottom of the vessel that usually uses water, as it is easier to make weight adjustments. For this control, the ships have a system of pumps that can fill or empty the tank with salt water. They need to handle the high pressure of the water, so steel or other strong materials are used for their construction. Considering this environment, such tanks must have regular inspections to catch problems early on so they can be easily repaired. Drones are used for these checkups because they can enter tight spaces and make this operation safer, cheaper, and more efficient. Any conditions that might weaken the ship, such as corrosion, cracks, or deformations are inspected using advanced techniques like ultrasonic detection. Also, a team of experts verify the performance of the valves, pumps, and other equipment that are used for filling, emptying, and venting the tanks. Maintaining and extending the good condition of the ballast tank is a vital task for the vessel. That is why coating is necessary to reduce the risk of corrosion and damage to the tank walls. During the construction of the vessel or after the regular inspections, a team of experts applies light-colored pure epoxy resin paint and modified epoxy paint. The painters use airless paint sprayers to obtain a uniform layer over the entire surface without wasting excess material. The steel is shot blasted or sanded and then painted with a suitable primer which enhances the coating adhesion. Airless spray painting relies on the material high pressure to atomize the paint, unlike traditional spraying with compressed air. This allows workers to cover large areas much faster than using methods like brushing or rolling. The system works using either an electric, pneumatic, or gasoline-powered pump that generates pressures from 150 to 3300 PSI. A filter is used inside the paint gun to remove any impurities that could clog the nozzle. The high pressure and the size of the tip opening create the atomization and determine the spray flow rate and width, resulting in a smooth coat with minimal overspray. The technology of the spray gun allows it to use several kinds of paint from water-based paints to emulsion and latex compounds. This same complexity means that a considerable amount of practice must be done for the workers to master the proper technique and avoid an uneven application. Just as there are diverse types of products that a tube can carry, there are also multiple kinds of coatings used to protect such pipes. One is epoxy coatings that can handle high temperatures and resist abrasion thanks to its composition of a curing agent and an epoxy polymer.
For the pipe interior, it is common to use polyurethane coating because it doesn't produce volatile particles, which makes it perfect for potable water. All of this variety of coatings can offer more than just protection against corrosion or abrasion. They can reduce friction and improve flow efficiency. As seen previously, many industries rely on the use of coatings to protect their products and obtain their full performance. One case can be seen with the wind energy industry and coating wind turbine towers. These enormous windmills are constantly exposed to various conditions that can harm their integrity. Extreme temperatures, ice formation, and even degradation by UV light are some of the conditions that the turbine must endure. So, to protect those windmills, a similar process done for big ships or oil ducts is followed. Acrylic, epoxy, or zinc coatings are applied to each part surface using spray systems or specialized thermal spraying when using metallic coatings. These surfaces also include the interior of the tower as humidity and temperature changes also affect this area. These huge windmills also need washing and cleaning to keep an optimal performance and reduce any risk of damage. Usually, when the components of the windmill are unassembled, they are cleaned using a team of experts with high-pressure water jets. When the windmill is installed, the trained technicians rappel down the tower and clean the blades. However, for both cases, this method can be very time consuming and requires training to get the specialized skills. Recently, more advanced methods have been implemented like automated robots that can clean the tower sections with little human interaction. Also, drones are used to get into places that are difficult for a technician to reach or are too risky to work. Each of those methods is applied, taking into account safety, logistics, environmental impact, and cost. Eventually, those same reasons lead to the development of newer and more efficient systems. Creating and applying paint coats are essential for any structure at sea, acting as a shield against corrosion, erosion, and biofouling. These solutions extend the lifespan and contribute to the performance of the structure in a demanding environment. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.